I'm going to show you how to complete a form of printmaking commonly known as a line of cut or a block print. Now block printing has origins as early as the 4th century BC. These early prints were created by carving designs in stone and then printing on early forms of paper and fabric. The stone block evolved to wood carvings as these were much easier to carve. The wood block tradition is still strong today. The top two prints here are wood cuts by Albert Dürer from Germany in the 14th century. The bottom right picture is also woodblock that was done in 1839 by Katsushika Hokusai. In the late 19th century, linoleum came about, and that became a cheap and much easier method of printing. The bottom left is a print done by Pablo Picasso and was done in 1962. Linoleum is a popular choice for printmaking because it is both easy to carve and it is cheaper than a woodblock. Lino cuts are becoming popular in schools for the exact same reasons. Now let's talk about the materials needed for a lino cut. The first is inspiration, whether it's an assignment or just a neat idea you had. The next set of materials are sketching materials. However you work best to lay out your design is what you need. In addition to those materials, you will need graphite of some form, whether it's a pencil or a rough block. You'll also need a fine marker. Um, I recommend something that can write clearly on plastic. Next, you'll need a piece of linoleum. It comes in colors ranging from tan to gray. Now when you look at your linoleum, on the back if there is burlap on it, you will also need a heat source. A hot plate, space heater, or microwave usually work well. The reason you need the heat source is that this is raw linoleum and will not carve as easily if it is not warm. You will also need a cutting tool like the one pictured here. They have interchangeable blades which each have different purposes. The last set of tools you're going to need are ink, like this, a brayer, now the brayer is the tool used for applying ink to both the inking plate and block. For an inking plate, you can usually use a piece of plexiglass or glass. This tool pictured is called a baron. This is what you use to do the actual printing. You can also use a wooden spoon if you can't find one. The last thing of course you're going to need is either newsprint or rice paper for your printing. Now let's talk about the actual printmaking process. The first step in any print is actually going to be creating your sketch. When you're creating a sketch, you need to look at line and flat planes of color. And then the next step is always going to be select which drawing works better for the print you're trying to create. Again, look at line and color and how that's going to transfer. Now after you've created your sketch, you're going to want to transfer your sketch to the actual block. This is done by rubbing your graphite on the back of the sketch and then redrawing the print on there by tracing the lines you've created. Now after you've transferred your sketch to the piece and you've taken off that tracing paper, you'll want to then take your marker and retrace those lines to make sure you can really see them on the piece. Next you're going to begin to cut. Cutting is done by pressing the tool in linoleum and gliding it across. You may want to practice this a few times before beginning your piece, so maybe grab an extra piece of linoleum when you're at the shop. This first tip is a medium V-shaped tip. Now each tip has its own special use and you'll find which one you like best for which purpose. This next tip is a medium round tip. It kind of has a square bottom, but it's good for gouging out some finer lines a little bit thicker. Again, don't forget, put some pressure on the tool as you're gliding it across. You'll find what method works for you as far as holding it goes, but it's all done by pushing down and gliding it across. Now the tip that I'm showing you now is a very small V. This is great for fine lines, and one thing that's nice about linoleum and when you're doing a block print is if you put enough lines close to each other, it's actually gonna look like gray as opposed to black and white. This tool is probably the biggest one that I have. It's a big round tip. This is good for gouging out spaces that you would like white. Now don't forget, every time you make a line, it's going to be a white line on your black background. So keep that in mind as you're making your cuts that this is going to print in the reverse of what you're doing. Everything that you're putting down is going to be white instead of black. Now your last and final step, of course, is going to be to print the block. This is done by rolling your ink on the inking plate, then on the block, placing your paper on it, and rubbing it with the baron. Now I'm going to show you an example of this entire process.
Now when you're printing your piece, the first thing you want to do is cut your paper down to size. With rice paper, it's traditional to fold the edges and just rip them down. Next, you'll put ink on your inking plate and roll it out so that it's a nice, even, thin layer with your brayer. After that's done, you'll apply it to your block, roll in the same direction, that way you don't take off any ink. And then you'll apply your paper, press it down in the middle, center it, press down and then use the baron to rub across and evenly apply pressure. When you remove your print, you'll notice whether or not it was a good one and you, if you need to make any changes. This time I needed to add more ink so that it was going to be dark enough to print. You want to double check that your lines show up and everything as well. After you pull it off, you have a finished print.